The story you're about to hear is true, but strange. Lean, honey, you're shivering. You <laughs> don't tell me ships' whistles always do that. No, to it's you. not that, Paul. Well, then what? After all you. Leaving home, you and your fiancé, you're heading for France, getting married by the ship's captain. Paul, no. But, honey... Paul, let's postpone it. Wait till we get to France. It's it's such a strange feeling. What is? Well, I've never been to France, and yet... Paul, I have the feeling that somehow I'm going home. That I have been in France before. Strange, true stories of the supernatural. With your narrator, famous author, lecturer, and expert on strange and weird events, Walter Gibson. Thank you, Charles Woods. Marlene Channing had never in her life been to France. And yet, when she and her fiancé, Paul Wellman, got off the boat at Cherbourg, the feeling that she was once again on familiar ground was stronger than ever. <laughs> It was a feeling that grew as they took the boat train to Paris that became even more positive as they left their hotel and had aperitifs in an old sidewalk cafe. Hey, Merlene, honey, snap out of it. You got that faraway look in your eye again. Not far away, Paul. Just the opposite. Just the opposite? Well, I... <sighs> Never mind, dear. Merlene, look at me. Now, Paul, I am looking at you. No, no, you. I, I mean, really. You know, you haven't really looked at me since... Well, since that boat whistle went off back in New York. Now, Paul, if you're going to talk about getting married... Well, what I... else? That's what we're, we're going to do, isn't it? We're going to get married the first night out by the ship's captain, and then you get some peculiar idea, and... Here we are in Paris already and still not married. Don't you love me, honey? Paul, you know I do. Well, then what? Look, baby, in addition to all the obvious comments, this is expensive. Expensive? Well, sure. Separate staterooms, separate rooms at the hotel. <laughs> Two can live as cheaply as one, Marlene, but not this way. Oh, I... I don't know what to say. Well, neither do I. It's just that I... It's... It's as if I'm waiting for something. Wait? For what? Not something exactly. Someone. A man. Paul, it doesn't make sense. I seem to know him and respect him, but I don't love him. And... But I have to meet him. I have to meet him before we can get married. Paul couldn't understand what Marlene was driving at, and neither could she. Then the afternoon came when, like all American tourists, they took a trip out to Versailles. Oh, Paul, it's... Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, the sure. palaces and the grounds and the gardens. Oh, Paul, no, we go this way. Oh, but honey, according to the tour. Never mind the tour. This way. This hedge. Well, oh, here's a little opening in the hedge. I'm going in. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Oh. Welcome to the Trianon, mademoiselle. It's not a masquerade, is it? A masquerade, mademoiselle? Well, all these people in serious costumes. But most assuredly not. And it's not Louis XIV, is it? My dear young lady, the good Louis XIV has been dead for some time. This is the time of Louis the Sixteenth. The time of laughter. Everybody laughs. But not you, monsieur? No, mademoiselle, I do not. For what is there to be gay about? If one looks beyond the wall of this garden, if one looks beyond the ramparts of France across the ocean, Mademoiselle, you stare at me. You... You look so familiar. I... As if I've seen you before. I, I'm sure I've seen you before. But where... Where? Marlene! 
Marlene! Oh. Marlene, what's the matter with you? I followed you through the hedge, and then all at once you were gone. I lost sight of you. I looked everywhere. I... Marlene! Yes. Oh, Paul. Where are they? Well, where's who? Oh, all the people, the party. They were so gay, only he said they had no right to be gay. Who he said... said... Honey, what are you talking about? We're all alone. We're alone? Yes, we are. Well, sure, honey, we... we... Hey, come on, we're going back to Paris. Come on, Anne, you're not drinking your cocktail. Marlene... What's the song? Marlene! What? Song? What song, Paul? You, you were just humming it. I was? Well, don't you remember? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, it does sound familiar. I never heard it before, and I know you pretty well. Or at least... I thought I did until yesterday afternoon. Honey, what happened out there? I met someone, Paul. Who? A man. He was young and handsome. He was dressed all in blue. A blue coat edged with gold. Lace ruffles at his sleeves and neck. Sounds like a dream. Oh, now, Paul. Honey, you know what I mean. I mean, you're imagining something. After all, this is the 20th century, not the 18th. But, Paul, it seems so real. Oh, it's this country, or maybe it's the water or something. We're not accustomed to it. Makes you ill. You can imagine anything. I didn't imagine him. Now, baby, He was real, as real as you are, and I'd seen him before. I know I have. Well, sure, that's great. You meet somebody back in the 18th century, and you're sure you've seen him before. When? In some former existence, maybe? No, Paul, that's the strange part. When I say before, I mean recently. I, I mean in my own life. Oh, fine. You're scrambling time for sure, aren't you? Look, honey, you, you've got to get over this. No! Yes. We may not be married, but I'm still responsible for but you. But there was something he wanted to talk over with me. What? There was. I can feel it. From big decision he had to make. You better let me feel your forehead. Marlene, you've got a fever. Oh, I haven't. I I'm still excited. say you've got a fever. Come on, you're going back to the hotel. You're going to rest. Marlene allowed herself to be led back to her hotel room. She made no protest when Paul insisted she rest while he went for the doctor. But half an hour later, when Paul returned... Marlene, I'm sorry it took so long. Marlene! She's gone. She's not here. Mademoiselle, you have come back. Yes, I have. And I'm most grateful. I felt I had to see you again. And I to speak with you. You are... uh, You are not French, no? No, I am not. I trust you are not one of the accursed British? No. I am American. American? What is... Oh, the colonies, no. That is where you're from, across the ocean. Yes, from across the ocean. What is that song? The song? Oh, never mind the song. Let the others sing and dance. They make laughter while the world falls about their ears. They are fools who cannot see the coming of the storm. Where? But everywhere, mademoiselle. Here in France itself, perhaps. But most assuredly, most assuredly across the ocean in your own land. What kind of story? Ah, how can you not know? Are there not already rumblings of it? Are not your people bitter against tyranny, against oppression? Yes, we always are. You speak as if your country had lived for centuries when it is even now just beginning. Just beginning? Mademoiselle, a question. Why should I stay here to lead this empty life? Why should I not go to your country? And fight for freedom. Marlene! Marlene! Oh, oh Paul. Oh, there you are, honey. Gee, I, I had a feeling you'd come out here to the pretty tree and on it. As soon as I saw your hotel room was empty, I. I... Well, did you. 
you see this joker of yours again? Yes. Did he make that decision? Decision? Yes, I think he did. It was the next day. Marlene and Paul were back in Paris. Paul had left Marlene at the hotel while he went out to get a visa for them to visit Switzerland. It was a hot day, and passing a small museum, he heard music. It was the same music he had heard Marlene hum. He went in and spoke to the curator, a young lady. Uh, pardon me. Oui, monsieur. Uh, that, uh, that song they're playing, is that a new song? New? In one sense, oui, monsieur. But in another, no. In another, it is very old. Paul listened while the curator talked, then went back to the hotel, taking with him a small picture. Marlene was asleep, but she awakened as she heard... <laughs> oh, Paul. Hi, honey. I, uh... I found out about your song. You did? I, uh, also picked up this picture. Look familiar? Paul, that's him. It's the man in the petit trianon. Who is he? The, uh, song is from 1775, Marlene. But it's just been found. Just been found? Yeah, it was forgotten for centuries until a copy of it came to light just a week ago. But, Paul, I heard it. Yeah. I guess, honey, that you must have gone back in time. You went back to 1775 and heard it. And, and, and maybe you even helped influence the guy in this picture. Influence him? To do what he did. You see, Marlene, that was his favorite song. And you're right, he looked familiar. We've seen his picture in history books. Whose picture? The Marquis de Lafayette. A strange passage back through time, one that was proved to have actually happened when a lost song turned up again after 150 years. I'll bring you another story of the supernatural, the hand of glory, a story true but strange. Tune in at this same time for Walter Gibson, your expert on the supernatural. Stories of ghosts, of spirits, werewolves, and voodoo. And each story you hear is true but strange. Strange with Walter Gibson as your expert was directed by Bill Marshall. In the cast were Anne Petoniak and Ian Martin. This is Charles Wood speaking. Strange came to you from New York. Strange has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.